This is a PC I built for less than $400 using Amazon. And in today's video, we're gonna upgrade it into a shiny bastion of gaming excellence using only Amazon's choice crap, which should go interestingly. But before we get into that, today's video is sponsored by the fascinating Corsair Shift series of power supplies. If you ever thought normal power supplies are stupid and have their modular connectors in the wrong place, Corsair has you covered by moving the connectors to the side of the power supply. A simple but ingenious way to more evenly use your power supply basement, freeing up your stuffing holes. So if this sounds good to you, check out the Corsair Shift series of power supplies using the link in the description below. Thank you Corsair for sponsoring today video. Now the upgrade part selection process was pretty straightforward. I would just Amazon Google the category of thing I wanted to upgrade and then just blindly pick the Amazon's choice option, which I'm not gonna lie, felt borderline Orwellian. So with that, let's see what upgrades our corporate overlords thought fit for me. I'm gonna start off with this package for no particular reason. Ugh. Upgrade number one is fans. Obviously we needed RGB and Amazon in all of its wisdom chose this set, which is the Cooler Master Master Fan MF120 Halo set. As far as I understand, not only do you get three RGB fans for about 62 Canadian dollars, but it also comes with a wired RGB hub. Very nice, I guess. We'll, we'll see how they work out. This thermal paste actually wasn't an Amazon's choice thing. I just bought it for my own personal use, so ignore that. Upgrade number two is some sleeved extension cables to get rid of the ketchup and mustard of the power supply that we have in there. This one was a bit harder to choose because there wasn't an Amazon's choice sleeved extension cable set, but this one was one of the highly recommended ones by Amazon, so I guess that counts? <laughs> so much of Amazon recommended goodies. Upgrade number three, I think we are at this point, is this SYY thermal paste that's packaged a little bit like a fancy condom brand that's marketed at finance bros. Upgrade number seven is some more storage and Amazon's choice is this crucial P3 one terabyte drive. And it's a nice and fast NVMe drive. Ooh. Now obviously, considering that we wanted to upgrade this system to a true gamer system, we needed some RGB. And Amazon's choice RGB strip is this Airgoo digital RGB LED strip kit, which apparently has super bright LEDs. What more could you want? And it should work with all of the other RGB that we have because it's just the standard RGB connector. Upgrade number 17 is a new CPU cooler, and Amazon's choice is this beefy looking Thermalrite Peerless Assassin 120SE, a big ass cooler that should cool the crap out of the 4600G that we have in that system. And then the final most important upgrade, upgrade number 17, is the graphics card, and Amazon's choice is this MSI Ventus 2 RTX 3060 a graphics card that cost more than the entire system that we're dropping it into cost. So um, yeah, this is a bit, of a, a bit of an overkill upgrade, I think, and I don't think the CPU is gonna pair particularly well with it at 1080p. But again, we'll see how all of that goes. A final note on the upgrade selection. I did also want to upgrade the power supply to something a little bit less IED than we had, Unfortunately, that power supply is the Amazon's choice power supply, so I guess I'm stuck with the PSU equivalent of white phosphorus. Thanks, Jeff. And with that outrage, let's get to our Amazon's choice upgrade. As a point of reference, let's have a bit of an oogle at the starting point so we can more fully appreciate the end result. Mmm. So I think I'm gonna start off by dropping these sleeved cable extensions in there. So it's, um, apparently the bag that holds them in has been chewed by a small dog. Okay, so we get some cable combs, that's nice. Two eight pin PCIe cables. And as you can see, they're this kind of like carbon and black color. 
Uh, it looks pretty good. You also get a CPU power and 24 pin extension cable. But why are they sticky? Ugh. Aside from my own stupidity. Oh, I missed one like right at the beginning. Ugh. The cable combs were real easy to add, aided in part by the borderline suspicious malleability of the cables. I think I'm gonna remove this bottom hard drive cage just to make a bit more room for cable management. We have a reasonable amount, but it's just gonna make things a bit easier now that we have this extra length of extension that we're gonna have to fit in there. Ugh. So now this can kind of go pretty deep into that hole and then we attach this. There we go, that looks pretty good, I'd say. Although, zip tying now is actually a pretty terrible idea, because I have so much RGB cable management and stuff that I'm gonna have to do later, but, you know, whatever. I'm sure it won't come back and bite me. And just like that, we have four times the storage that's also much faster. Which I think means next we should add the RGB fans. Uh, there's gonna be two in the front, and then we're also gonna replace this rear exhaust fan with an RGB fan. Which I am very excited about, considering that it's a Molex abomination. Ew. And with that, I've immediately run into a problem with my overzealous zip tying. I accidentally zip tied down the fan cable for the fan that we're about to replace. So I'm already gonna have to cut this one. I'm sure it won't come back and bite me. I think you just, oh! Yeah, that was easy. You get like a bunch of mounting hardware with it. Oh, this is like a three-way fan splitter so that you can plug all three of the RGB fans into one header. And then finally, we have our internal RGB cable so we can control all of the RGB with software. Now on the actual hub, we have three RGB headers, uh, which means I don't think we're gonna also be able to plug our RGB strip into this little box, uh, but this little box uses USB. So it means we are gonna have a free RGB header on the motherboard, so that's good. Hopefully this isn't gonna be a complete nightmare in the way that RGB often is. And then this is our fan. Yeah, it's reasonably solid. It's not like they're gonna do anything in the front anyway, considering, <laughs> considering the front ventilation on this case. Okay, so I've noticed an immediate problem with this case. Uh, we don't have cable routing holes for fans to go in here. So the cable routing may be a bit dodgy. First things first, you gotta break the fan's screw virginity before trying to mount them. It just makes it way easier. This is what pre and post guide hole savaging looks like. As soon as I finished my guide hole drilling, I found the fan cable routing holes. The cable routing holes are over here, but that doesn't make any sense because I don't think there's enough space for the fans. Yeah, that doesn't work. That's stupid. That is a hilariously unhelpful feature. But luckily, the weird shape of the fans came to the rescue, giving me space to route the cables. Other than that, mounting the fans was very straightforward. Ooh, we get two RGB strips. You spoil us, Ergu. Ergu supplements the relatively weak magnets with a bit of sticky stuff on the back, making mounting very easy. Although hiding the little daisy chain tail bits on the RGB strips required some creative crevice stuffing. With our RGB fans and two RGB strips, this thing is gonna light up like a hemorrhoid on taco night. But we need to finish upgrading it first. Ooh. Whoa, that is a big cooler. I'm not even sure it's gonna fit in the case. Mm -hmm. 
And obviously, in terms of thermal paste, we have to use our Amazon's choice, condom paste. And there it is, our silicon thermal paste. It fits, nice. Now, part of me kind of wants to just put one fan in the middle and then call it a day because the CPU that we're using does not need this much cooling. It was running very cool and quiet with the stock cooler, so this is obscene overkill. And the thing is, we have a little bit of a RAM clearance issue for the fan here. Now, I could add the second fan on this side, but then it's going to cover up some of our RGB, so I, I don't know, I think we kind of just need to add the one in the middle. <gasps> now, I'm not gonna lie, this Ventus 2 is a pretty losery version of the RTX 3060, uh, but it should get the job done. You know, I, I think it, uh, it's, it's okay. And with that, the transformation was complete. Hey, I'd say that's a very nicely PMPed system. I particularly like this very functional GPU anti-sag device. It's really putting in some work here, isn't it? And we haven't even turned it on yet. So let's drop the side panel on there and turn it on to see the light show. That's quite the improvement, making the internals of the starter system look like an unfurnished apartment. But what about performance? Obviously, we're doing a lot better than we were when we just had the iGPU in here, but that's compared to no dedicated GPU. So this performance bump is about as surprising as the sun rising in the morning, but that doesn't diminish the colossal size of the jump considering we also cranked the settings from low to high at 1080p. But it does seem like we have a little bit of a CPU bottleneck. Utilization jumps to about 90% every now and then, but yeah, the 4600G is kind of struggling to keep up with the RTX 3060. But I think, considering the huge amount of CPU temperature headroom we have, uh, let's do a small overclock on the CPU and see how much of a difference that makes to the, the gaming performance. In terms of overclocking, I went full newbie with it and just bumped the core frequency until the system wouldn't boot. 4.6 was as far as I could get. The fan on the thermal right cooler does not sound great. It sounds like it's having a bit of a rough time. But yeah, so this is with the overclock. The main difference seems to be the temperatures. Like you can see we've got higher power draw and more than 10 degrees Celsius higher CPU temperatures. In terms of performance though, I am not too sure. It feels very similar. Feelings that were corroborated by a standardized test, we barely gained any average frame rate, but we got a good jump in 1% lows. But I don't think the performance is entirely the CPU's fault, because in the previous video, I dropped an RX 6600 into the system without a CPU overclock and got a better result. So, uh, yeah, there's that. At the end of the day, Jeff's pick was okay, aside from the abomination of the power supply. Also, I probably wouldn't buy that exact version of the RTX 3060. In fact, considering the rest of the system, I'd be more inclined to just buy an RX 6600 for much less money. Or a used graphics card, come to think of it. Also, the Thermalright Assassin does not come with very good fans, and the RGB strips had this very cute habit of just switching off every now and then. Oh, I also compared the thermal paste to Noctua NTH2, which performed very very similarly, so that's pretty good. But yeah, with that, let me know what you thought of the upgrade and consider watching the video where I actually built this system. And until the next video, bye bye.